It's episode two. Good morning, Good morning, morning. everybody. Yeah, that's uh. Yeah. Sorry, it's kind of my line there, buddy. That's uh. I'll just that's what I'll just what I say. I'll just go film coffee with with. You're, you're not even dressed. Sorry for the brief interruption there, folks. Had to reset things a little bit. We've got three segments on Newman Offline for you today. Uh, we're going to kick things off with a new mystery segment. Don't want to reveal the title just yet. Bear with me. Following that up, we've got a quick get in focus from Morgan and Claire. We are then going to follow that up. Did you hear that? The door rattled. This is the second take of this. Anyway, after we've got get in focus, we're then going to move on to a final coffee with father. I think we'll all need a cup of coffee by the end of this anyway. So let's get into a new segment that we're calling Living Room You. <laughs> It's a little different to go to college when you can't actually go to college. Uh, the, 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 the rhythm of study and routine and you know, being on campus, um, kind of hard to replicate uh, when you're in your parents' living room. So what we've got here for Living Room U, uh, we're gonna have you know, periodic uh, updates and tips for how to make the best of it, how to make online classes uh, as successful as in-person classes. So we're gonna have six, six, we got six tips for you today, kicking it off with number one. Number one is schedule. Schedule, schedule your day. Father has mentioned this in his homily. We take it for granted. We always take it for granted that our day has a schedule. You're a kid, your parents tell you what to do. You go to school, they have a schedule. It gets progressively more difficult as you get older but all the way from the time you're four to the time you're 22 and leaving college, your day has a given schedule. When it comes to online classes, especially some where they don't have a set meeting time, maintaining a schedule can be difficult. But looking at an entire day, what am I gonna do today for the whole day? Very, very difficult. And it actually helps us to break tasks down into little bite-sized chunks. So for instance, you might schedule, I'm going to get up at 7.30. Then you'll schedule your shower at 7.35 or whatever. Schedule breakfast at 8. You want to go through your day and schedule out everything you're going to do and write it down. And that includes scheduling leisure time. You don't have to be doing something productive every single second of the day. In fact, you couldn't. You'd burn out. But it does help to schedule everything. So tip number one, schedule your day. Tip number two. Tip number two. Move. So when you're on campus, it's very easy uh, to move because usually you've got class in one room in one building and then you have to walk across campus for class in another. And that actually helps your mind know that something else is going on. It, it, it's kind of like how have you ever have been in a room where you usually work and then you try to relax in that room, you actually have a harder time uh, same reason that you shouldn't work in your bedroom because then you might like not actually fall asleep when you're supposed to. Our bodies and minds are, are, are all united. It's all one thing. And so we respond to place. So say you're in you know one part of the room. Say you're over, over in a corner uh, and you're studying math. And then you know math class is done. Well, it actually is a good idea to get up and walk to the other side of the room before you begin your next subject, English or whatever. In fact, adding in like a 15 or 20 minute break where you can walk to class will really help your body and your mind adjust to the next task. So tip number two is move. Tip number three, go analog. So a lot of times we'll have discussion board posts or papers that you write and you just sit there and you type away and it's all great, but it could be better. You see, whenever you're typing, you're just tapping a letter. Say if I want the letter A, I just tap the letter A. My finger goes like that, and that's pretty easy. If I want the letter A written out, I have to move my hand in a very particular way 
in order to get that letter. And it actually forces your mind to think a little bit more. You have to think about what you want. So the tip with Go Analog is very simple. If you have something digital, a discussion board post or a paper to write, consider writing it in a notebook first and then typing it up. Because as you form those letters, as you write them out, you carve them into the paper, you'll think about it a little bit more. You might put a little more thought into it. And then when you post it on the discussion board, you're golden. Tip number three, go analog. Tip number four, pray. Don't forget to pray. The Newman Center is not going to be right down your block as a sort of living reminder to pray. But go ahead and pray, and not just before meals, but make time for it each and every day. Kind of folds into tip number one. Let's go on to tip number five. Tip number five is book. This one seems a little bit strange, but trust me. You're at home, you've got your parents' kitchen, use it. It's a great way to break up your day. It has never been easier to learn how to cook. There are more tutorials online uh, for any given recipe than you could possibly imagine. So if you have a favorite takeout that you miss, go ahead and try and recreate it at home. And also, making dinner for the family isn't a bad idea, especially if you've got younger siblings. You can impress them with your skills. So take the time to cook. And if you want to hear more about that and want a few tutorials from me, just let me know. Tip number six, last tip, uh, is exercise. Especially if you're going to be cooking a lot. Exercise, exercise, exercise. I was crushed. Uh, now that the wellness center is closed that I can't go there and exercise, but I've started doing a seven minute workout at home, link in the description below. If you take the time to exercise while you're at home, not only will it help break up the day and give you more things to fill your schedule with besides, you know, Netflix, you also are going to actually help your body and your brain to function better. I don't have any research to cite for you. It just has been an experience of my life that on the days when I exercise, I feel a little bit better. All right, that's it for Living Room U. Let's move on back uh, to our regularly scheduled desk host. We're back to the desk. All right, so that was Living Room U. Hope you found that useful. Moving right along, let's hear from Claire and Morgan with Get In Focus. <laughs> Hey guys, Claire and Morgan here. Um, we just wanted to send out a little video to let you all know that the Focus Missionaries are back on campus. Um, we are going to be living out our normal routine and we are still doing our rotary walk around campus tomorrow morning and we would love to just pray for you all and intercede for you in any way that we can. Yeah, so if you would like to send us any prayer intentions, please comment below or direct message us because we'd love to pray for you guys. Yeah, have an awesome first week of digital learning. Woot woot. All right, thank you all for getting in focus with us. We really appreciate all of you who responded to the student survey and who sent in prayer requests already. We are praying for those. We've read through them. We're, Father is praying for them uh, in his holy hour every single day. So thank you for that very much. Thank you for sending those in. Please continue to do so. Uh, and speaking of Father, let's go upstairs and see what my compatriot has been up to. Uh, we're going to go now to Coffee with Father. <laughs> The best part about uh, this time in Lent yeah. is that there's these solemnities in the middle of the week that kind of break up the... Uh, well, we had St. Joseph. We had Saint, which, yeah, we had St. Joseph last week. And then before that, we had St. Patrick's Day, well, which, which is observed with such fervor by certain <laughs> certain Catholics. So you go to New York City on St. Patrick's Well, any other St. Patrick's Day, it's crazy. But, uh, but the, the, what's, what's special about, uh, about today? Well, today's the Annunciation. So when the angel Gabriel announces to Mary... The great plan of salvation in Jesus becoming incarnate uh, in her womb. And so and it's a big day of, but it's more than just uh, a day of the announcement, but it's also the day of Mary's, you know, great fiat, her great act of cooperation with God's grace. Does that mean that today, March 25th, is nine months from Christmas? It's nine months from Christmas, we have right? Nine on. months until Christmas. We have nine months in hope, dear. I didn't know you were the kind of guy that counted down for Christmas. 
No, I'm just, I'm a married man, so I'm really good at counting to nine. I've got, uh, <laughs> had to do it twice um, so far. Well, okay. So what, uh, we're going to have mass, obviously, live yeah. stream. Yeah, today's a, it's a solemnity. See all of you there. 515, live stream today. But uh, what else can we do to celebrate uh, the Assumption? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's August 15th. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. What else do you think we can do to celebrate the Annunciation? You know, it's a great day to meditate upon right, this whole drama between Mary and the angel. And it's not mm -hmm. just like the snap of the fingers. It's not like the angel shows up mm -hmm. and it's just like, you know, this uh, automatic thing that just happens. This is something you have to do and now it's done. It's, it's, it's different from that. Yeah, it's this drama between the angel and Mary, between... God's plan and her own heart and her mm -hmm. own, you know, and, and what she's uh, experiencing. And, but yet at the end, it's this, you know, beautiful moment of, of cooperation of, mm -hmm. of Mary with, in, with the divine plan, with mm -hmm. the desire of, of the Trinity to become mm -hmm. incarnate mm -hmm. in the word made flesh. Mm -hmm. And so it's this great day, I think, to meditate on the incarnation about, uh, you know, God present to us and the tangible realities of our life. Mm -hmm. uh, the concreteness of grace. Mm -hmm. I think religion always has this tendency to become very uh, otherworldly sure. or sort of like very abstract mm -hmm. and general. Especially now that we don't mm -hmm. really have the immediacy of some of the more concrete things of the faith, the regular practices yeah. of the sacraments and whatnot. We kind of, it's a, it's a time to really build that up intentionally because we, we can't sort of take it for granted. Yeah, and it's not just a matter of it's I mean, part of our challenge mm -hmm. in our unique circumstance now but i think it's just a general challenge in culture sure and in, in world history there's always you know the incarnation is always a scandal mm -hmm. to the human mind what do you mean by that that uh, we expect and assume that the spiritual realm is somehow other than the material mm -hmm. that it's in some far off distant place it's somewhere mm -hmm. else mm -hmm. it's in heaven it's opposed to to matter in our ordinary life. Mm. And so it's easy to start to like over uh, spiritualize uh, sure. our spiritual life. Sure. You know, and sort of imagine mm -hmm. that grace is some ethereal thing off in a distant place. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but there's something about the Annunciation which helps us see that God's grace works mm. in these detailed, particular, and concrete ways in our life, and sometimes very ordinary ways. So what's a, a detailed and concrete particular thing we could do to, to memorialize or celebrate that? You know, I think a great practice is the Angelus. You know? What is the Angelus? I've heard people say the Angelus. You and I went to St. Thomas and the bells always rung at noon yeah. for the Angelus. Never That's knew what right. to do. What do you do for the Angelus? What is that? Well, the Angelus is this great prayer. It's very short, very simple, mm -hmm. but it's calling to mind the key aspects of this encounter between the angel Gabriel and the heart of Mary okay. and the Annunciation. Mm -hmm. So it starts off, you know, just by recounting, the angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, mm -hmm. and then the, the response is, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Then there's a, a Hail Mary. So that's these three little uh, dialogues, these three mm -hmm. little antiphons. So if I wanted to pray it, I would start by, ha by praying it with somebody else, or can I pray it by no, myself? You can pray it by yourself. So say, the angel of the Lord declared unto Mary. And she conceived by the Holy Spirit. And we say, a Hail Mary. Hail Mary, full mm -hmm. of grace, the Lord is with you. And then yeah. what comes after that? Uh, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, let it be done unto me according to thy word. That's another call and response. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, yep. let it be done unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, Mary full, full of grace, grace, the Lord is with thee. And then what's the third? And the word was made flesh. And the word and dwelt among us? And dwelt among us. Okay, you're okay, I'm getting the hang of yeah. it. Okay, <laughs> that's good, that's good. And yeah. then you'd say, Hail Mary, Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. And, uh, <clears throat> and then you're done? No, and then at the end, uh, there's this closing prayer that mm -hmm. is done. It's the same prayer as the opening prayer, the collect mm -hmm. from the Roman Missal. Okay. Uh, pour forth we beseech you O Lord thy grace into our hearts mm -hmm. that we to whom the incarnation of Christ thy son is it the same same prayer every day yeah same prayer yep okay. and uh, you know and so it's just this simple three part prayer and it kind of like outlines these three major movements of the encounter of Gabriel with Mary you have God's invitation mm -hmm. right the response of the human heart sure. in Mary 
and then the fruit of that mm-hmm. and this sort of and the word was made flesh and that god's grace mm-hmm. and god's presence is now a concrete reality mm-hmm. in time and space how do we just pray the angelus on the day of the annunciation or do we pray it when we could pray it every day every day yeah would you like people to do that I think that'd be something great that we could uh, do in these days. I mean, sometimes you could pray it once a day. Mm-hmm. You know, there's It'll a be at noon, right? Yeah, and there's a traditional thing of doing it three times a day. Okay. In the morning, at noon, and in the evening. You know, mm-hmm. the kind of three big movements of the day. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we'll put up a little prayer card. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, on our website. Link link in the description, below. <laughs> just, just go down yeah, there and check click that out. right now. Um, click click. Yeah, we can make that happen. Yeah. yeah. Sounds good. And, uh, and it's just, a, you know, it's very simple. Mm-hmm. It doesn't take a lot of time. No. But I think it has great spiritual effects in our heart. Like, it really helps us to kind of enter into this dynamic that God is active. He's initiating so many things in our life to be present to us. Mm-hmm. We're able to respond, mm-hmm. you know, and it's just this kind of, right, this all day there's this, uh, right, God is, is bestowing so many gifts, so many invitations, mm. and then we can respond in concrete ways. There we go. This has been Coffee with Father. We'll see you for the next episode. Don't know how many more of these we're going to be doing, but we hope you're all doing well. First week of classes, halfway done, online classes, halfway done. And uh, I'll let you sign us out. All right. Blessings on this great feast day, the solemnity of the Annunciation. Well, that just about wraps the show up for us. Thank you to all for watching. And before we go, let's one more time go and say hi to Basil. Come on. Come on. Come on.